Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are for some fantastic questions. Great ones, we'll jump to them in just a minute. I just noticed I'm wearing the same hoodie as I was wearing last week. <laughs> I do own more than one hoodie. It is pure coincidence, I promise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've not got the cap on, all right? So I didn't film them at the same time. And these are new questions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just noticed that. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> welcome to Kendall Rant. Uh, okay, we've got some questions. First, don't forget the YouTube magic. How many people have started Kendall now thanks to our brilliant tactic of writing a comment down below, like, sharing and subscribing to get the YouTube robots to suggest Kendall to people who are likely to start it. Um, how many people? I, I, it, we've got to be like nearly 6,000 or something. Is that more or less than I said last week? <laughs> I'm not just picking these numbers off the top of my head. These are scientific facts. Um, but like like 6,572 people have probably already started Kendall uh, through um, you wonderful people liking, sharing, subscribing, and most importantly, going down below and type in a comment using the word Kendall. This is such a great Kendall video. Kendall is amazing. Something like that. So that the YouTube robots, they know to find someone who is on the periphery of starting Kendall and suggesting this video or this channel or channels like it to them and essentially press ganging them into starting Kendall. And then we, we increase the Kendall population. All right. There's some little YouTube battle droids in the background. <laughs> Going to find people and getting them into Kendall, all right? So let's Im increase the Kendall population by doing our duty and do the YouTube stuff. But most importantly, even more importantly than that, is that you support this channel, you do the right thing, and you shop at kendostar.com. Kendostar.com is the best Kendo equipment website in the history of the universe, of all existence and anything that happened before it. It's the best Kendo shop ever. Now, of course, I'd say that because I own the place. But it's true. If you look how high we're rated, we're ra rated higher than everybody else. Don't shop twice. Don't, don't, don't buy twice, is what I mean to say. All right? You're going to shop with us in the end. Don't go and spend your money on one of the pretenders. Get disappointed and come back to us in the end. Don't do that. Just do the right thing in the first place. All right? And shop at kendostar.com. You get the best kit. You get the best service. That is undisputed. And you support the channel. So shop at kendostar.com. Kendostar.com. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days today. Okay. Let's get to the questions. Hi, Andy. Last week, you talked about some pitfalls of teaching, which I took to heart. Good. Uh, I was thinking I would like to start my own dojo when I reach Yondan. My question is, how practical of an expectation is this? I currently train under a high-level sensei and the senpai range from Yondan to Rokudan. Would it be considered disrespectful to start another club in the same general area as my home dojo? Okay, that's a great question. So, I think it really depends. All right? It really depends. It's not just a blanket, outright answer, it's disrespectful or not. All right, it's not as simple as that. Essentially, all right, essentially, essentially, it all comes down to why do you want to start your own dojo? All right, that's that's gonna really be the end and be all and end all of this. If you want to start on uh, your own dojo because you'd like there to be more kendo in the area and you'd like another place for Kendall to happen on a, a different time, so it's a net plus to the overall Kendall in the area, then cool. 
I don't see a problem with that, especially if you intend to continue, you know, following Kendo at your current dojo, all right? But if it's like, right, I've, you know, um, I want to be the boss or I want to, you know, I want to experience being in charge, then probably it's best to hold off for a bit, all right? <laughs> Even when you get to Yondan. If you're in a dojo that's already got people from Yondan to Rokudan, like, you know, the question is, is what is the, you know, if, if another dojo is required in the area or not, if you feel it is. And as I say, and if it's, it's for the sake of, you know, increasing kendo practice in the area, bringing new people into kendo and giving existing kendo crowd more places to train, that's great. But if you're doing that, then yeah, you should probably you should definitely keep practicing at your current order. And the thing to do there is then you go to your sensei and you say, "Look, sensei, um, I'd really like to start up another um, practice area. Um, I'm thinking of starting up a, a dojo of my own. Um, it's something I really like to do to to grow kendo in the area and to 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 give back to the community um, and to give everyone else another place to train on a different t time. I'm not planning to reduce my training here. It's an addition to what I'm already doing." Um, <clears throat> and of course it, it gives everybody in the area another place to, to study Kendall. Um, is that something that you're happy with? And as long as they're okay with it, then that is well, knock yourself out, go and do it. Yeah. But if it's like, right, I want to be the sensei now and I want to have students that do what I say, then probably it's not the right time. <laughs> All right. Probably it's not the right time. If that makes sense. Okay, cool. Next, when your opponent thinks they got a hit and tries to run through, follow through, and leaves themselves open, are you allowed to take advantage and strike? Or do you have to wait for the judges to decide if the hit was valid or not first? This is a great question, and you know I love this subject. It's been hot talk in the last couple of weeks. I think last week, I didn't do a feedback video this week, but um, last week I did one and we talked a bit about this sort of thing. Of course. Of course you're allowed to hit them. You do not have to wait for the shimpan to make a decision. You do not have to do that. You can hit them immediately as there's a chance. And that's why you shouldn't do it. That's why you shouldn't run off with your back to the other person with no idea of whether they're chasing you or not or whatever, or keeping you exposed. You know, here's a, here's, here's a spicy one. You know, it can be Ippon, right? If you hit, you miss. You go off like this and they chase you and you keep your back to them. You don't turn around in like, like right away. And they hit you on the back this way, like this, like this. That can be Ippon. That can be Ippon. Loads of, loads of examples of it. Right? Of people that are like going, like mainly with like non-Japanese Kendall, but there's, or, or, or Japanese Kendall versus non-Japanese Kendall. Um, happens quite a lot. Uh, because yeah, you're still hitting the men. You know what I mean? It's you can't just defend yourself by turning your back to the person. Yeah. So, and it's probably gonna hurt a bit because you don't have the men on it to sort of protect you. So, that's not on lots of for lots of reasons. Okay. Um, I've got a video about Zanshin. What you should do. Okay. I know that the common wisdom wisdom or teaching outside of Japan is to hit and run off into the distance and you know lots of kids in Japan get it wrong too don't don't get me wrong yeah lots of kids in Japan do it because that's how they learn to do Kihon and they learn to do Kihon before they learn to do Jieko so it takes a little bit of time for them to realize that's not what you're supposed to do and sometimes senseis have to actually turn around and say look in Kihon yeah but when you're doing Keiko or Shiai you can't leave your back to the opponent you gotta keep your eyes on them and have to teach them that the problem is in the west we're like don't teach them that teach them to keep running away <laughs> so that's gotta stop okay <laughs> next one uh so this is a comment on the video so i think interesting is in response to the video itself uh, am i alone in thinking that the new trend of extreme short men that it looks stupid. Uh, I still use my first men from nearly 20 years ago and I love my long tarot. Uh They saved my shoulders many times. 
uh, and looking at all the generation of 7th and 8th dance, none of them wearing those short of tally on the men. It's heavier, more complicated shape and transport. Somehow I like them much longer. All right, so this is an interesting comment. You're talking about the men die and the length of it. So the, the, the length of the men die has gone through a really interesting evolution over the last 20 years, I'd say. Maybe 15 years. Like when I, about, I'd say when I first moved over to Japan, which is about 15 years ago, um, a bit more probably. Um, what is it? Yeah, it's about 15 years ago. Um, the the trend was just transitioning from sort of this longer men daddy to shorter men daddy. And within sort of three years of me being there, it went to very short men daddy. And then within five years of me being there, it went like ridiculously short. Ridiculously short. Okay. Um, especially amongst children like junior high school, high school kids. Um, but the short men daddy thing, then it calmed off a bit. Then the Zen Ken then got involved. The All Japan Kendo Federation got involved and they were like, yeah, stop that. <laughs> all right. So then you have to, now there's rules. All right. So the, the men daddy has to properly protect you. The men badon has to be thick enough to protect you. The kode has to be long enough as well. People are getting really tiny little kode as well. Um, and with massive, um, massive cutouts on them. Um, but now that's all regulated. So you can't do it. And to be honest, I don't think we'll see a return to those like massive aeroplane flappy men daddy. I don't think we'll see that again. Even you say this about Hattie Dance. Should we have a look? Let's, let's, let's have a quick, let's have a quick look, shall we? As they say, round my way. <laughs> Okay, so here we've got the, uh, let's move it to there. Uh, we've got, I, I shared this on the blog the other day, actually. This is the, um, this is the, uh, what is it? Prince Tomohito of Mikasa Cup or something. It's like a, a, a an eighth dan tournament that happens in Tokyo every year at the same time as the Tokyo tournament. Um, and you, you, this is the, this is like the Ippon collection from it. Um, but look, you can see, you can see, look, his, his men that here, his men that here are basically, um, at his shoulder, yeah, at his shoulder. This guy's a little bit longer, but we see you can see that really perfectly. They're right at the edge. So I reckon the length of these men, if we talk about in centimeters, now I know to the sort of lay person that doesn't make much sense, right? But I'm telling you now, as a sort of Kendall Borger professional person, um, the length of these men that is probably like twenty centimeters, nineteen to twenty centimeters. Okay, um, back in the day. Back in the day, they were like 25, 26, all right? And they come out to like here, all right? It's a big difference, all right? Now, of course, it depends on the person, but you can see here, th I think this is what we're going to keep seeing now, around 20, 19, 20 centimeters for the most part, yeah? Like this. This could be 21 because he's quite a big guy. I don't think so. All right, that's Kiono Sensei. I practiced with him a couple of months back. Um, it doesn't have dead long flappy men, daddy. I think they're about 20. Uh, in fairness, yeah. Um, they, these are a little bit longer. These could be like 21, 22, something like that. But what you ain't going to see is a return to those. Um, this is a bit of an older style, okay? But again, I don't think they're much longer than 22. I'll tell you now. I don't think they're longer than 22 centimeters. The... Um, the days of your, your aeroplane wings, they're gone, all right? You're looking at these sort of 19, 20 centimeter men daddy for the most part, all right? Um, because it's it's just more comfortable. It's just more comfortable. It looks better. I'm sorry, it looks better. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's, that's completely subjective, all right? If you prefer the longer look, fine, cool, no problem, all right? Well, the problem is, you know, um, the, you know, they can be a little bit, they don't get in the way all that much, especially like in Shiai and Keiko and stuff, because you don't lift your hands over your head that much, but still, you know what I'm saying? Um, the, I wouldn't say that it's, um, it can be more complicated to shape them. Um, it's not necessarily heavier, um, either most, the, the, the weight of the men, men is mainly, um, decided by the men gannet, the cage. Um, and then the materials used and an extra couple of centimeters on the men daddy it might add a few grams but not a great deal 
Okay. Uh, so yeah, but do, there, there has been a time when they were extremely short and that, that was looking a little bit silly. I think we're at a good place now where they're sort of at the shoulder length, around 20, 19, 20 centimeters, just about right. I can get away with around 19, but I tend to wear around 20. It's Kendall star. We tend, tend to have around 20 centimeters as the, as the standard length, uh, depending of course on the measurements. Um, but nothing like in the old days, like when maybe like, I don't know, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, a bit less. Um, I was, we were, we were looking at men that were like 17 centimeters, 18, 17 centimeters. It's a big difference. One centimeter is a big difference on the men. Daddy. Okay. So, so there we go. It's changed a lot. I think we're in a good place. Okay. We've got a long one. Let's have a read. Hi Sensei, I have perhaps a rather silly question. No, you have not got a silly question. The only silly questions are the ones you don't ask, okay? Um, the whole thing is very much related to my AD ADHD. Uh, in a well, I'm no expert on that, I'll tell you that right off. Uh, in addition to the attention deficit disorder, I also have rejection sensitivity dysphoria and imposter syndrome, okay? Uh, this means that I always think I can't do something and pretend that I can. On top of that, I have problems asking for feedback directly because I'm afraid of being rejected. Because that could seem like fishing for compliments to the other person. As you may have read on other comments, I'm quite new to Kendo about five weeks now, and I know that Kendo is a lifelong pursuit. The difference between knowing something and understanding something comes out quite strongly. I therefore need certain milestones to roughly orientate myself by. So much for the why. Uh, now the question, how long does it take to learn certain things at the beginning? I think you once said someone has to have certain skills to be allowed to wear borger in your dojo. So how long does it take to learn humikomi or footwork in general? Or the balance between the arms so that you don't hit with your right arm and all that? It's too individual to say exactly. I'm aware of that, but maybe an average based on your experience as a teacher. I'm 33 years old and I don't do any martial arts before Kendo, but rather fit and keen to learn anything about Kendo. Thank you, Sensei. Uh, edit, learn the learn these things to proper beginners level to, or to a level where you'd be allowed to wear build. Okay. Right. So first I'm not going to comment on your sort of stuff. You're like ADHD and the, like, uh, I'm going to mispronounce this still. I'm not good at reading and talking out loud. Rejection, sensitivity, dysphoria. There you go. Uh, and that sort of thing. All right. Imposter syndrome. I, I'm not, I'm not going to comment too much on that because I don't, know if it really makes a big difference to the issue at hand all right now you say you have problem asking for feedback directly that's fine that's fine you don't need to you don't need to in fact i have this i have this thought quite a lot like in <laughs> how far can i go with this like without really upsetting people asking for feedback is a really like like I'm going to offend somebody by saying this. I'm going to offend someone saying this, but I can only speak from a, the context of a person who is from England. All right. So I don't mean, but it's a really like Anglo-European way of thinking <laughs> in my experience. All right. Uh, I can't imagine in Japan when I lived in Japan, doing my best to do kind of the sort of Japanese way that many, especially that many Japanese people going to the sensei and saying, can I have feedback, please? All right. There's standard procedure that everybody follows. After you do keiko, you run to sensei, say thank you. Or you might say, onagaishimasu or something like that, whatever, which is a cue for them to give you a bit of advice. But the, you don't sit down and say, can I have some detailed feedback about my performance or improvement or what I should do? Like, like it... A, a sort of like if a Japanese high school kid did that to like a like in a serious kendo school did that to the sense that they'd be like think about yourself <laughs> so you know um ask you know I don't think asking for feedback is the key to improvement that a lot of um non-Japanese think it is all right um the sensei will tell you when you're doing it wrong they should right um, and they might reinforce what you're doing right, if you're lucky. Uh, <laughs> um, so, y you know, um, in terms of 
that, I don't think you need to worry too much. I think you just need to get to the door and just crack on and do your best to try and improve. You don't need to, you know, just follow what the sensei tells you and watch what the good people in your dojo do and try to copy it um, and watch Kendo on YouTube as well and try and copy that. Um, like Japanese Kendo, correct Kendo, yeah? Um, now, in terms of uh, how long does it take to learn things at the beginning, it does really depend on the person. Now, yeah, I have mentioned that in uh, my dojo, I require people to be able to do uh, Kirikaishi with Humikomi to a certain, you know, certain standard, basic standard, before I let them wear the borgo. All right, now, realistically, how long does that take? It really depends on the person. I've had people that can do it within five or six weeks, all right, but not many. Not many, not many. Most most people take at least five, six months. Some of them have been doing it longer. And I know people, there's people, there's people, I'm sorry to say this, but there's people even doing Kendall many years and still can't do it. So <laughs> uh, they don't necessarily realize that, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's how it is. So it really depends, all right? Um, but I don't think you need to worry about it. I only need to worry about how long, how quickly can I get good at this or how long will it take me to get good at it. Just go and do your best at the training. Just focus on the training. Do what your sensei says and follow follow the examples that you've seen. Don't bother about going up to sensei and saying, no, sensei, please give me some feedback or whatever. You don't need to do that. Think about yourself, all right? 33 years old, you've got the sort of perception and intelligence to do it by yourself, all right? You've been given the information in the environment that you need. Um... Your sensei will give you the information that you need um, and you'll be fine, all right? Other than that, it's down to you, okay? I wish you all the best of luck with it. I'm sure you'll do absolutely brilliant, okay? Uh, recently, there's been an online movement in Japan to move towards professional kendo tournaments where the winner gets a sum of money. I understand one has been organised via crowdfunding. What are your views on this development? Do you think it affects how people perceive and practice kendo? Uh, I don't think there's a big movement towards it. Um... I don't know how many there are that are offering prize money. I think I've heard of one or two. Um, I've heard of the one you're talking about. It's crowdfunding at the minute. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I, I, I think, like, the one that's being organised at the minute, um, I think it's called Kenkaku, is, um, I think it's a really cool concept. I really like the idea of the, the tournament, uh, but not because of the prize money. I think the prize money doesn't need to be part of the whole uh, the whole thing. Um, but I understand. I understand this, this, there are people um, of a sort of, I hesitate to say younger generation, because a lot of them around my generation are people that are sort of looking at Kendall and looking at other sports and saying, like, well, why hasn't, why hasn't Kendall um, got a more of a, a system like other, other competitive sports do where you can be a professional by winning prize money. There is, and that, that is a, it's a good point. All right. It's a good point. Of course, the argument would be is that kendo isn't a sport. It, kendo is budo, right? Um, and so then it's, it comes down to, well, is there other budo that, that has prize money? I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. But what do I think of it? Mm, I guess I'm not that keen on it. I, don't, I just don't think it's necessary because we're not at a point where it's ever going to be like a professional thing, right? Because Kendall just doesn't attract the sort of sponsors that would, you know, there's some, you know, burger shops and stuff might sponsor it, but they're not going to like donate a prize fund. Do you know what I'm saying? They're not going to be like, right, okay, f you know, $5,000 to the winner donated by whatever Kendall saw. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, <laughs> don't think we're going to do that, yeah? Um, so it has to be like crowdfunded, like you say, or whatever. And then, so, you know, you might end up with, I don't, I have no idea what the prize fund is for this, um, this, this one that's being organised at the moment. But it's not the sort of thing that's going to be like, okay, you can make a living from it. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I just don't think... I don't like the idea of it. Now, it's not that it's not that I'm against the idea of um, financial compensation necessarily uh, in a Kendall uh, situation. I know a lot of people have a bee in the bonnet about that um, outside of Japan, especially, right? But like, 
uh, earning money from kendo is not a new thing and it's not an uncommon thing it's 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 absolutely super prevalent um in japan it's it's very very common um that people earn money from from kendo um so you know people people are a little bit uh snobby about it outside uh, of japan in my experience like oh kendo is better better than that sort of thing it's not like that or it's the same and like sorry but these policemen that spend all the all day every day getting paid to do kendo they're getting paid to do kendo school teachers that just teach kendo which there are some just do that there's all sorts of things some of these some of these top top senseis they get paid to be shinpan at Shia, you know it's not like oh, they get well they get thank you money all right or they might get they might get some sort of money for different duties that they hold within you know uh kendo federations or for particular schools or universities yeah they get paid for it yeah <laughs> so i'm not against the idea of people getting paid in a kendo sense though i'm not so sure if i'm super keen on the idea of a specific taikai giving out prize money but i don't know it's not the end of the world i guess we have to see how it goes see where it goes and see it. like i think it's a, an interesting innovation and i wouldn't rule it out straight away i think we should just see what happens with it and see what direction it goes in one of the things i have a bit of an issue with like the police championships for example though and that's i guess that's my issue about it is the police championships is is it's not so bad these days but a few years ago and i think the individuals isn't as bad as the teams but the teams can get a little bit nuts and it's it it like it it devolves away from really kendo shiai and it's just people like properly just fighting uh, and it's like proper sports orientated um it can be um and I, d I don't like that so much and the reason for that is because the reason it gets like that is because these guys have got their career resting on it right you've got these guys that are, or, or girls girls as well of course um I, th I think there's a women's police tournament uh, team championships. Is there? I don't know. Uh, I don't follow it that much, uh, by the way, before anyone gets mad at me <laughs> for saying that. But um, I, I follow the individuals, but I don't follow the police teams that much because I don't like the I don't like it that much um, for this reason. And it's that you know um, you've got these these coppers that are. Uh, um <laughs> that's not meant in a derogatory way by the way i don't know if it means derogatory stuff elsewhere but here in england that's not a derogatory term um some of my friends who are police officers call themselves that my whole my whole family on my wife's side are all policemen so anyway uh <clears throat> um you got these police officers that are joining these matches and these shi and their career like literally rests on it all right and of course that influences to how they conduct themselves in the shi all right because if they go back maybe back to wherever they've come from, whatever prefecture, and they got they got knocked out in the first round, like their, their like boss of their station or whatever might never have touched a shinai in their life, might not be a Kendall person, is, is then going to be like, well, what, what have you you all been doing for the past year? You know, <laughs> you know, there's, there's problems there. So uh, I just think it, 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 it's not the same as like when you get the old Japans or something like that. It doesn't, that's why it isn't, isn't all a mess like the, the police championships can be. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can get some great matches in it. You can. Um, but it's it's like my least favourite of the All Japan tournaments. Probably second least favourite. I don't like University Kendo either, but that's a totally different reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's Le Cut out the back. Anyway, um, hi Sensei, do you have any tips on when taping your big toe for keeping the tape from rolling or coming off? Thanks. Yeah. Um, so get the tape as flat as you can when you tape around. I, I don't know what you're talking about in terms of taping the big toe, but I I basically, if that's my big toe, I tape around just around this part where it meets my foot there. Yeah, around this. So if it was, it'd be this part. I get the tape as flat as I can this way. And and here's the key. I make it so that the, the join of the tape is on the top. <laughs> it's on the top, never on the bottom. Okay, and if best not to the side. Right, try and get the join of the tape on the top or the end of the tape on the top. Okay, and then, then, and here's the part, hard part, you have to try not to twist your foot too much. <laughs> That's a difficult bit. Okay. Okay, uh, here we are at the last one. Let's have a look. First, uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> I misread my own name. 
This sensor he mentioned previously that Sandan is the final technical grade and that Yondan becomes more mental, sort of. Um, would you say that this is also when we would naturally be developing our own style of how we do Kendo? Good question. Second and unrelated, I've been practicing for a year now, currently acute, great. Um, initially, I was having the usual problem with blisters due to bad footwork, but they seem to have stopped forming until the last couple of weeks, that is. I think I've found, I think it's because I've been thinking more about how my arms are supposed to work in, in a strike, shoulders and wrists in particular, and less about my footwork. In your, in your experience, is this something that happens? I'm assuming that this is just part of learning, uh, Kendall, <laughs> and, and that while it keeps, uh, and that while it, and that while it will keep happening, it's, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's it, you go out of focus. Yeah, I need to turn out of focus. All right, come on, let's try again. <laughs> I'm assuming that this is just part of learning Kendo and that while it will keep happening, it, it'll happen to a lesser extent each time. At least that's my theory. I'd also like to add uh, re regarding Shi'ai uh, that anyone feeling reticent to take part absolutely should. I was that person but I've taken part in three Shi'ai. Okay, we spelled that wrong twice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my little red pen thing. Shi'ai. -E. Uh, this year... And I've been, and have all been great experience. Good from what I've learned, a lot, from which I've learned a lot. Not just from taking part, but getting to watch ex, watch excellent Kendall live and t talking to other competitors. Sorry for the length. All the best. That is a great question and a great post. Thank you very much for it. Okay, so <clears throat> first bit. Would I say that Yondan is when you would naturally be developing your own style of how we do Kendall? I think Yondan's a bit early. To be honest, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know. To some extent, yes, and in others, no. Like, yes, but also no. <laughs> um, I think Yondan's a bit early. I feel like at Rokudan, it's a bit early to be, like, trying to start my own style, do my own style. Of course, I naturally have my own style of Kendall, but, like, it's... It's created through deficiencies in my technique. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's created through a combination of, of, of stuff that I'm not too bad at and stuff that I can't do very well yet. Um, <laughs> um, to be honest. So uh, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm trying to like do my own style of Kendall. I'm just trying to do Kendall as correctly as possible uh, and I'm just not quite able to. Um, so I don't think, <clears throat> like, I think it's, it is probably nat a natural aspect of developing in Kendall that you do form a style of your own, which everybody does. So that's why everybody doesn't look exactly the same. And that probably does start around the sort of Yondan level. Um, especially with people that start as adults. But, but, it's not always the case for a start. And secondly, I think it's more of a subconscious thing. I don't think it's something that people should be like, right, I'm young done now, I should start developing my own style. I don't think it's something that people should be <clears throat> putting too much weight on themselves. Does that make sense? Uh, now about your blisters, yeah, I think that's quite normal. I think it's quite normal, you know, you'll go through peaks and troughs of that sort of thing. It'll get better, then it'll get worse, and it'll get better and it'll get worse. And it's it's good because like it serves as a reminder, oh crikey, I've got some blisters that I don't normally get. I thought I was over that. To kind of go back and readdress the things that, you know, um that were happening. Um so definitely I would say that. There's other things as well that happens in like uh I used to go through <coughs> I say used to, uh touch wood. I've finished now, but <laughs> I used to get to go through phases like every couple of years. I'd have like three weeks where I kept getting hit on my left thumb. All right. And I get a big blood blister underneath my, my thumbnail. Uh, and it was, it was because I developed a specific way of, of blocking or defending myself where I was kind of doing this. And then people going for my quad, they were hitting me right on the left thumb. It was just a, a sort of combination of things, um, that were all happening at the same time. Um, 
so it's, I, I think it's a bit of a similar thing to that. Then I'd work my way out of it and then it'd go away and then a couple of years it'd come back again. I think, I, I've, I think I've been through that maybe three or four times now, but hasn't hasn't been for quite a while. So hopefully, they're crossed, fingers crossed, hopefully I'm done with that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So I think I think it's one of those things, okay? Uh, and lastly, a comment about the Shia. Yeah, um, uh, that is a great comment and it's absolutely true. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, you get in the Shia. Just get in the Shia. Doesn't matter about the results so much, especially if you're still new. Um, get in there, experience it, learn about it, meet the other people, watch the other Kendo and you'll learn loads from it just as, just as you have. Okay, there we go. We are at the end. Thank you very much for joining me and staying with me right until the end of today's Kendo rant. I hope you've got a fantastic weekend of Kendo ahead of you. I certainly have. Have a great one. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Shop at Kendo Star. Bye. <laughs>